Welcome to the homework for Lesson 6, Grade 3, Module 3. Write your name here first. We're labeling tape diagrams and filling in the blanks to make statements true. We're using the distributive property to make sixes and sevens, to make multiples of six and seven. So we like to work with, uh, with fives as much as we can, because counting by fives is easy. So we're looking at six times seven. This is one of the last ones, one of the harder ones, math, multiplication facts for people that most third graders will learn. Uh, we have five times seven, which is, here we have tape diagram. Let's fill in all the sevens. So this is five sevens here on this side. That's 35, same as seven fives. Then in here you have one seven on this side, right? That's that guy right there, which is just seven. So 35 plus seven, right? Think of the seven. We just did that. 35, think of it as a five and a two. So we have 42 when you add it. And so here we have the equations for the distributive property. 6 times 7 is the same as, think of 5 plus 1 in parentheses, times 7. So that's how we get to 5 times 7 plus 1 times 7. And really, this is the easier way to think of it, I think, because it's just 5 sevens plus 1 7 is 6 sevens. Then we have 35 plus 7, which is what we just did, 42. So this is just getting you to think about breaking this up into smaller units or getting you to friendly facts and how to, and using them so that you can get to five sevens then if you know five sevens you can use it to figure out seven sevens five sevens is 35 and then we have two sevens over here two sevens that's 14 and we're going to add these two together. We're going to get 49. You can just add the digits there. 3 plus uh, 3 tens plus 1 10 and 5 ones plus 4 ones. And you don't have to bundle anything into the next place value. So we've got 49. And if we're going to write this out using the distributive property, here we go. Right, we're taking the 7. Seven sevens, I'm thinking of it as five plus, think of that seven as five plus two. And then we're still multiplying by seven. So that's five sevens plus two sevens. Five sevens is 35. Two sevens is 14, just like we did above. And 35 plus 14 is 49. Now, if you already know 7 times 7, and you already have it in your head, so you know it so well that just like you know your name, you don't have to think about it or count or add or whatever, or use some rhyme or whatever it is to a memory key to remember it, you just know it when you have to remember it, then that's great. You don't have to do all of this. And really, the point is you're also practicing using the distributive property. So that later on, when you have to multiply crazy numbers in your head, like 37 times 49, you can actually do that in your head. We're using the distributive property and using these kinds of methods. You can get to be able to multiply those kinds of numbers in your head very quickly when you get good at using this distributive property this way. But we're starting with more manageable numbers so that we can get good at this skill and then we can use it to solve more difficult problems but not this year okay so we're going to do eight times seven so we're going to think of that as five sevens and three sevens because five plus three is eight so five sevens we know we still know that's 35 now three sevens is well two is 14 three is 21 here we have all these sevens. Here's the three sevens on this side. The five sevens on this side. And if we add 35 and 21, here's another one where we can just look at the digits. And for the tens, we've got three tens and two tens is 
five tens, and then our ones, we don't have to bundle any of those because it's just five plus one, it's six. So eight times seven is 56. And this is what it looks like with all the equations, right? We've split up the eight into five plus three, right? So the, here, the five plus three replaces the eight, and it's still times seven. That's how those two expressions are equal. So now we're looking at five sevens plus three sevens. We know what five sevens is. We did that up here. And we know what three sevens is. That's 21. We solved that above. And then this is just the same thing we did up there. 56. And now we're looking at nine sevens. Well, that's... these five 35 do you know that five times seven is 35 yet because we have been drilling it accidentally while we've been doing all this four sevens it's one more seven than 21 28 right and this is four sevens four times seven so we have 35 plus 28 and we're going to come up with 63 for an answer when we add those in our head and what I, the way i do that in my head is i think of 25 and 3 then i have 25 and 35 Remember that's 50 60 and then 3 more 63 so we're looking at this 9 times 7 is 5 plus 4 so the 5 plus 4 is taking the place of the 9 and it's still just times 7 on both sides. So that's how those expressions are equal. 5 sevens plus 4 sevens, just as we did above. 35 is 5 sevens. 4 sevens, we just figured that out above. That's 28. 35 plus 28, 63. All right, now we're breaking apart 54 to solve 54 divided by 6. So we can do this just like backwards, just like we're, we've been doing this to uh, for multiplication to make, uh, we've been doing this multiplication to make products. Now we can do it with division to get quotients. So... 54, if we know our 6s a little bit, 54 divided, maybe you don't know that one, but we know 30 divided by 6 because that's a 5, right? This one, That one's going to be 5. That's a friendly one. And now after the 54, if we take 30 out of that, we're going to have 24 left. So it's 24 divided by 6 is the other part. So 30 divided by 6, right? That's that right there. This is 24 divided by 6. So that's 5, and this is 4. 24 divided by 6 is 4, and that's 5 plus 4. It's 9. Now this, is real, this really is tricky, but just look at this. Look at this dividend, and think of, look at the digits, and then just figure out what the other part would be. So we're doing 56 minus 35 right and now you have enough ones and you have enough tens so you don't have to unbundle anything or do any of that stuff in your head you can just look at the digits and subtract six minus five is one for your ones digit and five minus three is two for your tens digit 21 and now we're just filling out the rest of the form so here's 56 divided by seven just like it is up here that equals the 35 divided by seven 35 divided by 7 plus this part, right? Because it's still a part like any other number bond. It's still two parts and a whole. So there's the whole. And here's a part. And we're going to add it to the other part. So that one part is 35 divided by 7. The other part is 21 divided by 7. And this is 5. And 21 divided by 7 is 3. So that's what goes there. 5 plus 3 is 
8. 56 divided by 7 equals 8. 42 third grade students sit in six equal rows in the auditorium. How many students sit in each row? It says show your thinking and we're going to show our thinking by drawing a tape diagram. So we need six equal rows and what I'm going to draw a tape diagram really looks like one row. So if you really wanted to you could you could draw it like this to make it look like each section was the beginning of a row. It doesn't matter. It's still a tape diagram. It's just turned on its end instead. Now we need six equal rows. So that's one, two, three, four equal parts, right? And this is 42. There's 42 students here. And each box here is a row. One row. Now there's two two ways and I'll show you kind of a fancy way to do this and then there's also a way that just uses a tape diagram in a really easy way but I'll show you the 42 what we're really doing is 42 divided by 6 to figure out what's in, how many are in each row so 42 divided by 6 remember what we just did above we could use that trick just to show you how to use it in, a, in an actual problem. The 42 divided by 6, right? We know 30 divided by 6 is a pretty easy one, right? So that's the same as 30 divided by 6 plus, and what will be left? 12, right? 42 minus 30 would be 12. 12 divided by 6. So this is how you use that trick that we were just practicing above to actually figure out a division problem. And we know this is 5, and that's 2. So it's going to be 7. But, and you might have known that. Maybe you already know what 42 divided by 6 is. Most third graders, it's one of the last division facts you're ever going to learn and commit to memory. But it, here's a way you can just use the tape diagram. If this, if this really still is not working for you, this little trick here, if that's not working for you, and I don't blame you if it isn't, use the tape diagram. We've got 42 students. We've got six rows. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42. There's seven in each. <clears throat> so there's a couple different ways you can do that one. And then we still need a statement. Seven students sit in each row. Ronaldo solves 7 times 6 by thinking of it as 5 times 7 plus 7. Is he correct? Explain his strategy. He's using the distributive property, isn't he? Because 7 times 6 is 6 sevens. And then you can say that 6 sevens equals five sevens plus one seven <clears throat> and five sevens is five times seven and one seven is seven
So six sevens is right seven times six. This could also you could also just add in that this is six times seven. <clears throat> 